Hi, I thought I'd uh, just show you this uh, parcel that I've uh, got recently. Hopefully it's got something inside it that is going to help with uh, a project that I'm doing. Yeah, it's a USB microscope. Let's have a quick look. What have we got? Some sort of stand. I have no idea what all these plastic parts are. More of a stand and a base. More plastic. CD and I guess the business end. So yeah, the microscope is actually this metal tube here. You might be able to see if I can get some focus happening here. Come on, focus you bugger. Now it clearly doesn't want to focus. But we've got some LEDs uh, around the lens there. And a reasonably long cable goes to USB input. So we're going to need some sort of um, computer to display this on. There are some more expensive um, ones made by the same uh, brand here, which go straight out to HDMI. But I thought I'd uh, try this one. Anyway, let's just quickly get these other parts assembled. This looks like it just threads straight into there. And we've got a bit of a height adjustment going on here, which seems not too crusty. Let's see what we can do in terms of getting this. Mounted also, looks like this goes in there. No, let's try something else. That's more like it, but that is, oh gee, that's quite tight. I need a bit of persuasion. That was enough persuasion. Need to get a little bit of uh, tightening on that. So I thought I'd get the camera reset up in a different orientation. I've got it uh, pointing now towards my laptop screen. I've got the USB microscope uh, connected up to a USB port. It's a USB 2, I think. Um, and we've got it on quite a wide angle. The distance between the USB uh, lens and this PCB here it would be in the order of a couple of inches, 50 millimeters or so. Just to give you a bit of... Uh, size on screen. This is the ballpoint pen here and we can see these row of MOSFETs quite clearly here. Uh, we can just about make out the part number but what we can do with this stand is that we can zoom in by rotating this knob and it goes down quite smoothly 
But you will notice there is quite a lot of weeble wobbling around. If I can just hold the stand and then weeble wobble this up and down. We've got a lot of slop there, uh, which is fine as long as you don't touch it, you know. So, so let's just zoom in a little bit more. We'll go to about an inch away. And then we'll just tweak the focus, which is this knurled ring on the top. And then you'll see that we've got a really good picture there of that MOSFET and we can clearly see the part number no dramas we can even see that that MOSFET's been put on a little bit not square uh, so yeah it's 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 pretty good you can go even closer let me zoom in on these little itty bitty um, now are these going to be uh, 0805s, 0604s probably let's go in Sorry for the background squawking there, the cockatoos are having a bit of a field day outside. So there, yeah, look, you can very clearly see the markings on that little resistor. And then we've got the capacitor off on the right-hand side. Not a bad picture quality for the sort of price that we're looking at. The illumination is not that fantastic on this bench and um, the L there are some LEDs on the end of the camera itself and that's adjusted with this little rotary knob I'm not too sure what the switch does it does, I thought it would switch the uh, camera on and off or something but um, <clears throat> doesn't seem to do anything but um, the this rotary switch does clearly switch the LEDs from all off as they are now and then all on However, there's obviously an automatic gain control going on somewhere, either in the software or in the camera itself. And then, in fact, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. But anyway, um, lighting's not too bad. Uh, it could be enhanced possibly by some other LED lights. What else? Um, I think pretty much... Uh, oh yes, there's the software here which obviously shows you a live picture. You can make a, an AVI uh, a video of this and you can also capture JPEGs and bitmaps, I believe. So yeah, it, all, all in all for the price, it's a, quite a, a good little USB microscope. There are some cheaper ones. There are obviously some more expensive ones which uh, which are not actually USB but they have a HDMI, HDMI output directly on them. Uh, but they are substantially more expensive and for my use this is occasional use. Once every few weeks maybe for some SMD soldering or repairs and things like that this is uh, going to be ideal. So yeah I'd recommend it. If you haven't got one go out and buy one. Anyway this is uh, the end of a hopefully super but short video. So, see you next time. Tara now. Bye. So, I uh, might have said goodbye, but actually I wasn't satisfied with my own review. I didn't cover enough points, I feel. I've got the camera now set up inside in my studio and just looking through some of the settings. And what we've got here under the options is we've got two video capture settings. We've got a filter. And on this filter, we're able to change a number of the sort of common settings that you'd expect with a camera, like brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation. You can even change the this frequency here for anti-flicker. If I go across the camera control, there's nothing on this tab. It's all grayed out, so there's nothing there for us to play with. If I then go back to options and look at this video capture pin, I've changed it uh, already. It's uh, we've got two options here: MJP and YUY2. I don't know what those two are. I'm afraid. I'm sure the JPG is JPEG. Um, but you can change the output size. I assume that's the output side of the stream, which would be the AVI. Um, Anyway, uh, it was set on 640 by 480 by default, although it says default here was when I switched on the software, it was on this. So I've changed it to the maximum. It doesn't seem to change anything else. Um, the video playback seems still quite smooth. I'm just moving this pencil here. That's a half millimeter lead in the end of that pencil so I'm just moving around in real time I'm not getting much video lag on that at all so it's quite workable 
Uh, finally, I guess in terms of capturing, you can capture an AVI file or you can capture a still. I won't show you any of that. Suffice it to say, I've had a look at it and it's pretty much what you're seeing now, hopefully. And in terms of the still, you just press the snap and it pops a JPEG or a bitmap, depending on your settings, into a particular folder on uh, your drive. So, yeah. Sorry, this addendum was nearly as long as the original video, but I will say goodbye again. Ta-ta for now.